In this video, we're going to talk through analyzing your fitness data and checking it for its variation and determining whether there has been a change in that data. The way we're going to do this is using the coefficient of variation and the smallest worthwhile change calculations. These are going to be really powerful tools when you are assessing your data and want to see how stable your metrics are and also if your athletes have changed based on the training that you've given them. So let's get after it. So what you're going to see on screen here is a data set taken from a testing boat. And what we have is all of the athletes that have tested and then three trials of the counter movement jump taken in inches. And so when we start to analyze this data, there's a few things that we're going to want to compute to see how effective our testing session was. So the first thing that we might want to compute is just the average of each trial. So an easy way to do that down here at the bottom is equals average and then um, basically, Google Sheets is pretty smart and it knows I'm going to want to calculate this average, but if it didn't, I could easily just drag here and close that off and it's going to give me the average in inches from all of my athletes for this trial. And then I might want to just drag that across. And then for any statistics that I want to calculate on the whole data set, I might just want to type equals average. And instead of just one column, now maybe we want all of the um, counter movement jumps that were performed on that day or we might want to calculate the standard deviation. So what the standard deviation tells us is basically um, how what the mean of that data is and then on a normal bell curve how much of our data falls within a certain number of standard deviations with a lower standard deviation meaning that the data is more clustered towards the mean and a higher standard deviation meaning that there's more variability in our data. So that type that, we just type STDEV and open that up and it's going to ask me for the cells and I can just select all of this data here. So that's just some base level statistics that we might want to calculate. Um, and basically what this is saying is our mean is 20.8 inches. So that's the middle point. And then um, the bulk of our data falls within about 1.89 inches, plus or minus on either side. Um, the next would be two standard deviations away, so approximately 3.6 um, inches, and then so on and so forth, all the way out till we get to the outliers. Now the second thing that might be of use to calculate is this idea of the coefficient of variation. Um, basically what the coefficient of variation is going to tell us is how stable each uh, metric is for each athlete, so essentially, we're going to calculate um, how close it is to the mean for the trials with a lower calculate or a lower coefficient of valuation uh, variation telling us that that metric is more stable and a higher coefficient of variation telling us that that metric is more noisy. So let's do the calculation for that. And basically what it looks like is equals, um, we're going to put a bracket and we're going to do the standard deviation of the three trials and then divide that by the mean of the three trials and we'll close that all off in brackets and we're going to multiply that by 100 to get a percentage so when I hit enter oh I've just typed in mean wrong I want to type in average sorry I was talking in stat speak so when I calculate that out what it's going to give me is the coefficient of variation and what you're going to see here is if we have this athlete who is 19.7, 20.1 and 20 their coefficient of variation is only 1.04 versus this athlete who is 19, 20.2 and 20.7 there's a lot more variation in their three trials so their coefficient of variation was 4.38 so basically what this might be telling us is either this athlete learned how to do the test over the course of the three trials or perhaps they were um, doing the test differently each time or any number of factors versus this athlete it might be a little bit more true representation of what that athlete is capable of and by the time we get down here to 0 0.55 we have an athlete um, that that is pretty much a stable metric to tell us um, what that athlete is capable of. So just important to note that when we're looking at coefficient of variations, we can just take a look at some of the higher ones in our data set and just see 
if that is um, trials that we want to keep in our data or if that's something where we might want to redo that test. Now from there, what we can actually do is calculate an overall um, coefficient of variation by just taking the average of all of these. So if we just take the average of all of those, it's going to give us a coefficient of variation of 2.43 which basically tells us that this is a relatively stable metric. Um, that means that it actually is giving us um, what we are testing and it's not a very noisy metric. We don't have to do a whole lot of filtering from there. Now from there, one of the next things we might want to calculate is this idea of a smallest worth, worthwhile change. And the smallest worthwhile change is basically a measurement of how much this metric would have to change in a subsequent testing bout for us to be able to determine that it was due to the training program or the intervention given versus how much is just normal variation in that data. So for example, if these were two testing points of counter movement jump one to three, if our athlete went from 19 to 20.7, you can see that on a normal day, that might be the variation that that athlete experiences. But how much would this have to change in order for us to really be certain that it was due to the intervention and not due just to the normal variation? Now, in order to calculate the smallest worthwhile change, the accepted formula is 0.2 times the standard deviation. So I'm going to just take this equal sign away so Google Sheets doesn't think I'm um, writing a formula. So we already have computed the standard deviation down here. So if we wanted to, we could type in 0.2 and then multiply that by the standard deviation down here. And we can see now that 0.38. So if we were able to increase this person's vertical jump um, by 0.38, we could assume that it's a trivial response um, and that that change is most likely due to um, the intervention that we've given. Now some metrics might be a little bit more noisy, so we might be looking for a likely or a certain response. And the way that we might want to calculate that out is we might want to determine one coefficient of variation away from the mean. And that would kind of ensure that we're accounting for this variation and that it's a likely change in performance. So the calculation for that would be um, equals, and because we're working in percentages, we would take the mean divided by 100, and then what we want to do is multiply that by the coefficient of variation of 2.43. And so we can see now that we get a result of 0 0.49, so we can be pretty, we can um, attribute it to likely if we get a change in vertical jump of 0 0.49 inches. And then to be certain, if we could get a two coefficient of variation change, we could, we could be pretty certain that that is due to our intervention. So the calculation for that is just this number multiplied by two, which gives us 0.97. So now what we could do is in a subsequent testing bout, um, we could use this as a standard. So this, this athlete, if we took their mean, equals mean of these variables here. Um, sorry, I just, we want C2 to C to E2. Whoops. If we take the average there, so their average is 19.96. And then that, what that might look like, I'm going to move this over a bit. So if we took that 1.96, if we went equals this plus this, I'm going to lock this in because I'm going to drag it in a second. If that athlete came back and tested at 20.35, it would be a trivial increase. And we could attribute that to performance. Likely, if it was 20.45, and almost certain if it was 20.94. So we can use this to set standards or improvements that we would like to see from our athletes, which allows us to be a little bit more um, specific with what we'd like to see our athletes attain in the future. So I hope this video helps you out. If it does, please like and subscribe to the channel and share it with another coach who you think it might help them out.
and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.